Uh, okay, now you can hear me. I'm sorry for that. Alrighty then. Welcome everybody. Welcome to the great transition. How are you, Seth? All right, man. I didn't notice that uh, you're showing our video while the song is still going. That was a trick. Oh, was... that's you know, okay. it's uh, it kind of adds just getting everything set up here. I see that uh, <laughs> this friend from Finland is like here early. I think three, four shows in a in a row already. That's all right. And with him, we have uh, a bunch of people. I see Minnesota, Salt Lake City, uh, North Carolina. We see um, familiar names, slightly slanted sleuth, of course, the David Mancini. Um, we got Colorado David in the house. Destined, to be, uh, destined to be a big name in our future. Yeah, for sure. Cairo, Egypt is in the house as well. Hello, Hi, Kiko. I Hello, Isabel from Brooklyn. Hey, Patricia. Hey, everybody. Great to see you. All right, welcome to The Great Transition, everybody. If you're new here, then we want to tell you that something big is happening in the world. Maybe, maybe you are feeling something in that regard. Maybe you're feeling like you have no idea where the world is going, and yet you know it's going somewhere, somewhere bigger, maybe even better than what it used to be. So we want to tell you that you're absolutely right. Something big is happening. We call it The Great Transition. And as we go into this great transition, we want to explore how we can unite above all differences, rise above all of the differences without eliminate them. But whatever makes us different, politics, religion, culture, all these things, we can somehow, some way, find our common humanity, our oneness, uh, how nature's laws tie us together despite all those differences. So that's what we want to do here. Welcome everybody to the great transition. And Seth, um, you, can I can I just hit you right away with something? Go for can it. I just, Eat the frog first um, thing in the morning. Let's I mean, go. you okay? Let's let's just let's just do it. Let's just go for it because y you know we you know we were supposed to talk about this topic, but I didn't show you uh, this article specifically, which I thought is a good. A good idea to start with okay so let's just dive right into it here is something that is that is happening this one this art this headline is about Europe but this is this is a big thing that's happening now all around the world so in Europe you have politicians from um, various parties not necessarily the same party and they're saying listen everybody we have to shorten the work week we need to start working less and this will be great for COVID as well because uh, people will be able to share more of the work instead of laying people off. You'll have, uh, you know, more people working less time. Uh, there's a, there's a, um, here's a nice quote that they wrote a letter to like the officials and the, the presidents of whatever, like England, Germany, Spain and others. Uh, and look this, I found this kind of especially interesting they're saying for the advancement of civilization and the good of society now is the moment to seize the opportunity and move towards shorting uh, towards shorter working hours with no loss of pay um it's it's interesting there's another there's another uh uh there's another quote i want to read to you this is one of the campaigners says this the four-day working week has hit the mainstream and it's now up to governments, business leaders, and trade unions to work together to make it a reality. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, the, another one, yeah? Here's another quote. The COVID-19 pandemic has thrown the world of work up in the air, offering a much-needed opportunity to rethink how we work. So you get the idea. There's a bunch of people who are saying... While we have this COVID situation, throwing people out of jobs, um, you know, workplaces are in flux. It's not exactly clear what's going on. Let's take advantage of the opportunity and shorten the work week. This will do good to our civilization. Um, they also say it'll be it'll do good to the climate crisis as well. Um, all kinds of advantages. So um, why not? Actually, what do you think, man? I have so many thoughts about this. First of all, um, I'm second generation in a family business in a uh, in a service oriented business. Mm. We um, so we didn't really stop for the whole um, COVID crisis. We mm -hmm. basically service appliances. 
um, you are essential. I mean, yeah, we're essential, essential um, people, essential, not a very sexy business, but a very important business. Um, and, uh, <laughs> so, um, thinking about it from that side and then thinking about it from the other side, I have met, first of all, before we even get into it, we should probably say for, for anyway, it's a great concept. Okay. But Who's writing the article? Why are they writing the article? What's their okay. agenda? Let's just leave that aside. Okay. Let's leave any kind of politics aside and just entertain the concept because for sure, if we see something in the mass media, there's some kind of agenda behind it. Who wants this? Why do they want it? Um, but let's, my my boys today had school, I think from like 8.30 till 12. Okay, that's that's not. And that the much. older one who's in high school doesn't have school on Fridays, so they have four hours of school four days a week. It's they used to go like six or I mean seven to eight yeah. hours, um, five days a week. Here's what I think: uh, for sure, we don't need to be working so much. Okay, first of all, pretty much everyone's expenses went down. Uh, since all this began, we're not running around. We're not shopping all the time. Mm -hmm. Second of all, if we're going to have a good life that isn't full of war, uh, we're going to need to have meals with our family, speak with one another, learn how to be together. That what do you mean? What do, what do you mean by war? By war, you mean that we're always at war with ourselves on our day to day. We're that... at war with ourselves. We're okay. at war with people in our family. With we're at war at work. We're at war in society. We're in war between countries. We're filled with an evil society where everyone is just at war with everyone all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have time to be with our families. We don't have time to exercise. We don't have time to have leisure time because we're constantly working. So right. something like this would enable us to spend time with our children, meaning we could learn something in our life and then actually pass it to the next generation so they can benefit from all of the mistakes we made and all of the wisdom that we acquired. Exercise, that would be a great thing. Sure. Uh, less of a sure. burden on society if people are healthy. So anyway, it's a, it's a great concept, um, but we're going to have to, here, here's the other part of it. Same thing with like the basic, um, what is it, UBI? Yeah, universal basic oh, income. Oh. It, it's really part of the discussion, but okay, we'll, we'll get there. So, <clears throat> so take this concept of um, the kids schooling at home. Take the concept of the four-hour work week. Take yeah. the concept of UBI. Take the concept of all of – I was in New York yesterday. What a melancholy vibe in the air. Oh, my God. Um, but take all these restaurants shutting down. Take all of these stores shutting down. You have a lot of time on your hands now. Right. And add to that automation and, you know, AI and all of those kind of mechanization the, systems, the question, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The bigger question isn't about like how many hours should we work? The bigger question is what are we going to do with all this time? Like, is there something valuable that we can do with if it's just to change all of our life just so that we can watch more Netflix? That's not a, that's not compelling enough. Hmm. But if there's some kind of <laughs> if maybe if we were transitioning into some kind of new <laughs> life then and we had a need for time uh to do something meaningful so then uh, okay then we could have a conversation okay so let's talk about the conversation yeah okay so the conversation first of all it's part this uh shorter work week is part of a bigger conversation that is now going on there's this whole post-capitalism school of thought that uh, is gradually being uh, taken to account uh, by more and more people. Are you a communist? Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Of course, of course, we're communists. Just for even bringing that topic up, just for even you know mentioning it. Yeah, of course, some of these people that are bringing up these ideas are considered uh, uh, commies. But um, uh, well, you know, we don't want to uh, take sides right now or go into this whole communism versus capitalism because i don't think that is the conversation uh, at least not the one that we want to have but um but yeah there is this knee-jerk reaction right as soon as we talk about things that challenge the status quo of capitalism immediately you're gonna have people looking at this conversation right now 
through this prism of okay more socialists more communists what uh what you know more uh whatever usually they they attribute that you know to the left of course and you know we can be easily classified from that perspective so let me let me calm down all of our viewers okay let's do a little disclaimer here there is a conversation and it's an interesting one and it's a relevant one and we want to go into it and we want to give our two cents but we're gonna uh try to discuss this from a deeper perspective one that takes human evolution into account one that takes our um, accountability to the laws of nature into account and not one that is driven by politics uh, or economic interests or other kinds of, of uh, human based agendas we're trying to understand where humanity is evolving let's enter the conversation of this post capitalist uh, uh, idea from this perspective human evolution where is it going what's happening today and how do we how do we look at what's happening from this perspective okay so uh, no. this this, this the, do, this you, buy that? do you buy that do you buy that this okay. would be the story that should be in the guardian <laughs> not the four-hour work week it's like you know when a boat uh goes through the water yeah and after the boat goes through the water there's like ripples behind the boat called a wake so it's like the right. Guardian is writing yeah. a story about like the size of the wake and how big it is and what is awake. Mm. Meanwhile, they're missing the whole thing. I there's see, a boat moving saying. somewhere yeah. and there's people on the boat mm. and there's a destination they're going to. And meanwhile, everyone's on the side like measuring the way. Yeah. It's like, that's but not but the here, the arguments also happen because, you know, on these, how did you call them? Wakes? Uh, yeah, like. this is the only all of the arguments and the political arguments are about that so we're, we're gonna change this policy or that policy or you know you're, you're gonna add this regulation to the market or add that regulation to the market and all these things are like little bits and pieces that focusing you know what I would even say that focusing too deeply on those details prevents you for, from seeing the boat and where it's where it goes and you know what i mean it and where it's going towards exactly so yeah so this okay so this shorter work week is of course you know part of a bigger conversation that uh is happening among scholars uh and among people and among politicians and uh, you know and, and online in different places and yes and it's not just the shorter work week there's a lot of things that are that are you know being weighed and taken into to consideration like a basic income universal basic income the idea of giving each and every person a certain basic income regardless of the labor regardless of of the work there's the idea of uh, you know other services that like to fulfill the basic needs of people that maybe should be uh, also basic rights without the need to pay for them such as medicine just such as uh, that is healthcare, such as uh, housing clothing education so all of that is being all the basic animal yeah. animal kind of needs Ooh. shelter food health that's an interesting animal existence that's an interesting idea uh, a title like an interesting definition for it here <laughs> call it the running, uh, for politi running for political office yeah. i will ensure all of your animal needs are met <laughs> oh, here okay here's what i want to say about the i do want to say something about the the politics of it not not to to go to take a side and go into it but just to to uh to exemplify uh to demonstrate how um irrelevant the political discourse is in 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 light of what's actually happening so the the this move this big change is happening uh with covid with you know uh instability and uncertainty about where the economy is going where jobs are going and while this is happening so the the public demands at large not everyone but mostly the public demands from the elected leaders in whatever country it doesn't matter to bring things back to what to how they were and the whole argument between left and right today is about who's going to be able to bring things back to how they were 
<laughs> did, you, did you think about that? So it's it's basically the right will tell you, you know, I will bring back jobs and da, 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 and do it great again and do it this way, yeah. And then the left will tell you, I will bring back jobs by you know uh, ending the pandemic in this way or that way, and we'll do we'll do it more responsibly or better, and then we'll bring back all the jobs. And the public demands to go back to 2019. The left lead, uh, leaders on the left or leaders on the right give them their agenda for how to go back to 2019. But guess what? 2019 isn't coming back, man. It's just not coming back. And that, when you, when you start taking that into account, then you got to think about, okay, is it really jobs that we need to bring back? Is it really uh, an increase in GDP that we need to bring back? Is it really more consumption like we had before that we need to bring back? Is it really more pollution and air travel that we had before that we need to bring back? Is it sending our kids to the same outdated 300-year-old based education systems that we need to bring back? So when you look at, you know, where we are in this p pivotal point in, in this, this kind of turning point uh, that COVID puts us in, these questions become relevant. These questions become, uh, it, it, it's ridiculous not to ask these questions. It's, it's, it's um, short-sighted to propose solutions that are based on bringing everything back to what it to, to what it was. Um, it would be very exciting in all these cases to really ask uh, each person who wants to be a leader. Yeah. Tell me, tell us, even give them like a, I don't know. I would be very excited to give a politician, um, I don't know, $50 million each and ask them to make okay. a uh, make a five minute movie of the future that you want to depict for us the future of show us what America will look like or what any country will look like in four years after <laughs> you have um, been in charge, right? Because uh, everything now is just like bickering about nonsense. Like, show me your vision. Mm hmm. Show me if you win and you have the resources and you have everything paint to me. Here's $50 million paint. This is, there's no campaigning. You just for six months, for eight months, we give you the best Hollywood directors, whoever you want. Show us your vision of what my life is going to be like in four years when you've done your job and each one gets to show us their vision. Then we, then, then we, you know, the four that, hour work week, the vaccine, no vaccine. This is it all irrelevant. I want to know where we're headed. When, Pick when my you, head. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, when you put things in that kind of perspective, when you put that, you know, give me this clear vision on the table kind of demand, it becomes clear that our, our whole system of politics is just, um, uh, I'll tell you what it is. It, it's outdated. It's becoming obsolete because it doesn't do... It, it, what it does is it perpetuates the vision and it doesn't solve our problems. At the end of the day, we Which have... Which does it perpetuate? It's, it it perpetuates, perpetuates division. Division. Oh, division. Yeah. That I thought because, you said it perpetuates because the vision. Ah, no, that, okay. <laughs> sorry, that's, <laughs> so it, I wish, but um, yeah. So why? Because by nature of how it's built, it's, it's this idea that you gotta, you have to be competing with each other to win against the other side. And that that dynamic just creates a situation where the vision only has to grow it can never you can you can maybe it can go down for a little while you know but there you cannot if you're a politician and you want to win you can't even take into account you can't even make steps towards 
uh, reconciliate, true reconciliation Not with, the, with the other side. Exactly. Exactly. This is this is the issue. So it basically it's set up. Go ahead. <sighs> it's it's set up. If you want to win, you have to destroy the other side. You have to you have to divide, and and that's the only way to win. And so because of that, you also can't solve problems. It's not designed. We can't actually solve problems. We can only move them around from side to side. And this is how a reality looks like in the last few decades, right? Like one side takes the helm, uh, takes the lead, and then, you know, deals with the problems in one way. And it's, sort of, and it's sort of like this hot potato situation that that all the leaders are like, you know, throwing from one to the other. And also the, the, those leaders themselves, they're also like, in a sense, uh, of course, they are very, you know, unfortunately, power, the power corrupts them. And, and in, in this, let, let's leave that aside, the corruption aside for a second, but they're kind of miserable. They're kind of miserable because, you know, within two years in office, they already have to start thinking about how to get reelected. And it's always just this game of hot potato, you know, just, 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 you know, not holding it in your head just to make sure that whatever's going to happen is not going to, you know, uh, if it's a disaster, it's not going to be written under my name. If it's a success, then I have to somehow write it under my name. This whole, uh, this whole setup doesn't make any sense in a world that's becoming increasingly interdependent, in a world where we are becoming increasingly divided and we need to find a way to coexist because we're dependent on each other, and in a world where we are destabilizing the climate and, and you know, uh, uh, have to make sure that we are balanced with nature. What would these movies look like? What would these politicians' movies look like if you gave the po the, each politician, you said, no campaigning, yeah. Here's 50 million. Here's 100 million. It's a, it's, a it's year, a, six months to make a great movie. Show <laughs> us your video. What would they show us? It's a good question, man. I mean, would they show us? It's a great us, question. Would they show us, you know, half of the country, you know, well, we're going to put half the country in jail. Uh, you know, everyone doesn't believe in us. We're going to put them in jail and we're going to, what are they going to do? And we're going to give everyone free money. <laughs> what, what are they going to, and the other side, the, uh, the other side says, well, we're going to, put everyone back to work and have the greatest GDP. And meanwhile, we're pumping more pollutants into the air. Nobody's got time for their family again. Mm -hmm. um, so let's make a movie, every, Seth. Let's make it now. You ready for it? Let, let's, yeah. let's make yeah. our movie, okay? So whoever's, uh, whoever's watching right now and, and uh, has $50 million to give us, <laughs> we're going to convince you now why it's worth it. <laughs> Okay, I would I would show I would show that it is possible I'm not I'm not organizing the script right now. I'm just throwing ideas now. Okay? okay so we'll have okay. to we'll have to reorganize it, reorganize it afterwards. But one of the things I'd like to show in that movie is how we are capable of creating a society where people are not people and countries and economies are not measuring GDP. They're not measuring how much business did we do. They're not measuring, uh, you know, did, did, did the stocks, did, did, did the stocks rise or not. What they're measuring in an empirical way is, are people getting happier? This, it, it, this is a, I'm not... I'm not hallucinating. This is a doable thing. Ask any, uh, you know, psychologists, social psychologists. Uh, um, they'll tell you there's the whole there's a whole field that's been developed in the last 20, 30 years of happiness psychology, positive psychology, mm -hmm. where they yeah, come up right. with all of those empirical measures to see are you happy? What makes you happy? There's all kinds of reports point, that you can test. Money stops making you happy. Exactly. Anymore. And and they can quantify it and they can also correlate it to your physical situation, your familial situation, and so on. So I would start measuring Chris, I see our our Chris Jones our um, our beloved Chris Jones is throwing some some things in us here. Okay, measuring happiness. How can we measure it? Five approaches uh, researchers use to measure happiness. Okay, so and, and there you go. There's a bi biological method, behavioral method, all kinds of methods. So thank you, Chris. So there is a way to measure happiness. I'd show in our fifty million dollar film. I would show a society where people are uh, uh, are seeing 
how happier they are becoming thanks to what they're doing in society and how all of society becomes happier, more relaxed, healthier, more resilient, less depression. Uh, these are the things I would measure in the future society. Today, when you measure, you know, uh, and I also want to show that in the movie, that comparison. When you measure GDP and you see a number that goes up, what that means is and smokestacks and po po as the GDP goes up, you just show more pollution flying into the air. More exactly. Obese. The, the, I, I don't think everyone, you know, captures that idea, but this is what's happening. You have you have a society, an economy and thereby a society that measure progress by that number that encapsulates a lot of bad things that we're doing. So if that number goes up, which we are, you know, uh, uh, programmed to want to see it actually means that we're hurting ourselves in many ways in many ways from hurting our uh, nature the ecology to uh um, to uh our psychology and everything in between and so i would uh, okay so this is what i throw at you uh, we can develop that further on but let's just say the measurement changing the measurement just showing how that's possible and think about you know uh, how you know phones and our technology how all of that can start serving that whole concept go man just go what do you what would you what, what would you throw my in the movie? Vision, my, what, yeah. what, I, what would i would show uh the family a p person waking up in four years from now after i've been president for for four years yeah i would show that a person wakes up in the morning with hope uh, that person wakes up, if they put something on, um, it talks about things that are, are developing in the world that are helping each other. The ones that are famous or the celebrities are the ones who are the, are, and not in some not cool way, in the coolest, most exciting way, uh, helping being the greatest benefit to others in the most exciting ways, putting on the greatest barbecues, putting on the greatest concerts, making the most fun games, uh, creating fun I'm things sorry. at the beach. Sorry, right, we, we, have a, we have a disturbance here. There we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you just said, yeah, okay. I, I totally, cut, totally cut you off, yeah? <laughs> I, I would imagine uh, I, I would show a life where um, when COVID first started, it was the spring here. When when the quarantine first started here, it was um, it was April, May. It was beautiful out, and we have trails um, like a mile from here. Um, and hold on a sec. Two teenagers homeschooling. Um, we were down. Uh, I, I, th there was trails like a mile from here, and there was just I don't know, could be hundreds of people out walking, parents with kids, people on their bicycles. Um, I never saw people, and now again, there's nobody back down there again. So I would see a world where people spend time outside together, people walk together. Um, you know, have you ever done that? You ever like done like 30 minute walk every day for a period of time in your life? I actually just started doing this, uh, with the pandemic, interestingly. Okay. I, so, I yeah. started doing it regularly. Yeah. Like a couple just months ago. Just to walk yeah. and think yeah, and not yeah, in yeah. front of the computer. It's, there's something mm -hmm. therapeutic about it. It's very natural. Um, you have time to kind of air out your mind. You have time to, you know, it's a different pace than being in front of the computer or being on the phone. So I, I would imagine just simple, simple things at first, not revolutions in technology and revolutions in mm. industry. And I'll tell you why. Mm. Because once everybody starts to live in a more healthy way, and once everyone starts to feel more calm, once neighbors start to feel safe together, from that that's the people on the boat headed towards the destination. You can then measure all the wake and stuff behind it later. Like that's all like what technology comes out, what the mm. needs of those people are will determine what technology they might need. Oh, like what, okay. What if I'm happy, if me and all my neighbors are, you know, having a barbecue 
in, you know, every other night, someone else is making some barbecue in the backyard and all the kids, and even if not, even if we eat home, but all the kids play together safely. You don't have to worry about the kids being kidnapped, play, play, playing in the yard. Then all of a sudden, the kind of things, we don't need a thousand companies making cameras that are going to go all over my house so that no matter where I am, I can look on my phone. If someone's kidnapping my child when I'm going yeah. grocery shopping, is someone kidnapping my child? When I go to work, is someone kidnapping my child? What the hell kind of life is that? What is that? And now you have companies and their stock value is going so high because they made a better camera that can be in your house to tell you if someone's kidnapping your child. What? It's insane. It's insane. We don't mm -hmm. need all of that kind of technology and all that kind of thing. So in short, start with the relationships between people. From that, we determine what are our needs. And from that, it will determine what kind of industries we need, what kind of technologies we lead. You know, what, what kind of technology we, geez, we need? Okay. No, that's, you're putting the focus on the emotional state of the human being and its, um, and his relationship with the other fellow human beings. Now, okay. I, let's go back to, to, to let, let's go back, put this back into the context of capitalism today uh yesterday and tomorrow okay so so i would say this for a while now for 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 a long period of time meaning a few decades i guess maybe more like 50 years maybe for 50 years half a century or something like that capitalism was was working for a lot of people maybe for the majority of people it created uh, or enabled or didn't stand in the way of creating more abundant kind of life. And then at some point, it just stops working for the benefit of most of the people. And the moment, because it's like, you know, you have this kind of, I'm going to oversimplify it now, but you have this situation where you allow people to just, just compete for their own greed at the end of the day, take the, forget about the stocks, forget about the banks, forget about the numbers, the GDPs, the measurements, the economists, just what's economy at the end of the day? It's what you talked about. It's the relationship between people. Economics is the reflection of human relations. It's about what we each give to and receive from each other, from society. That's economics. So capitalism came into the world as a new concept that said that said, let's just all freely compete with each other, but everyone aiming to get the best they can. And while we're doing that, we'll also be doing good to other people. You know, I'll try to, to make a lot of money and I'll have to do it by serving someone, by creating some benefits, some value for someone. So I'll just do that. And for a while, this worked, but then... From the moment you start having winners, you know, you know where that while is. Yeah. The moment you start having what? From the no, go. Uh, uh, uh. See, it, it really works. It worked up until like all of our animal needs were met. Like it, mm. it helped us develop. Okay, now everyone has a home. Okay, now we have running water. Everybody. Okay, good. And now we're all connected. We all have something in our house where we can see what's going on in the world, and everyone has a refrigerator. Okay, like. We got to, and then it gets to a point where it's just about counting zeros because after you have everything you need. So that that's that's a good that's a good aspect. So this is so this is where um, um, this is one aspect of it where it get it took us to a certain point of abundance, let's say, and from that point on, there begins to be a problem. There begins to be a problem with needs and uh, actual needs versus what the system, what capitalism wants us to need, right? There's, um, what, um, so that that's one aspect, but that, what, what I was going to say, and we can talk about this, but what I was going to say is it worked until you started to have these winners that because they got so great at the game, at the end of the day, there's no more competition because you have all these monopolies and all these like, you know, huge uh, corporations and huge players that essentially it's game over. 
That's basically what happens. And so you end up with a situation where it can't l work long term. You just, you just can't, you know, you put people in an island and you let them compete. At some point, at some point, some people will have more power over the others. And when that happens, you're going to have dissatisfaction on the other side. Now, how disproportionate is this situation between the powerful and the powerless will determine the stability of the system. And we're coming to a point where we need to consider a new concept for stability, not because, you know, ideologically there's a problem, because, you know, uh, uh, this is, uh, it's not ethical, just because it's not going to be sustainable. If you have a pandemic now, and people are anxious about what they're going to do and how they're going to eat, and they don't know what's going to happen with their jobs, you have a problem. If, you're, if that problem continues, then you might not be able to, uh, to, uh, to sustain society. You might have to start in some way calming down these people and providing them with some of their basic needs if you want to coexist. So these are the, the kinds of questions that we're, that we're, that we got to ask ourselves in a 21st century uh, uh, humanity that is plagued by a global pandemic. And um, let, me, let me show you, let me show you how yeah. New Jersey is planning on solving this. Bill to decriminalize marijuana in New Jersey passes in committee and is amended to include hallucinogenic mushrooms. Okay. All so right. That's one way to calm everyone down. That's that's another way. Uh, and sh of course, here too, you know, you can talk about, you know, pros and cons. Let's not get into that now. But for no, sure. No, I'm not talking about for even even any benefit or not benefit, but just the point is when when everyone's going to have all this time, and yeah. they don't have like, they didn't come up with a plan to school everyone. They didn't come up with a plan to educate people. They didn't come up with like any plans of what to do to people. It's like, all right, well, let's at least keep them on the couch in the meantime. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Give no, me some smoke and keep on the couch. It's it's just we have to. I'll just say let's let's head over to the chat and see what's happening there. We uh, uh, let's uh, let's look at that. I'll just say this that we we need to come up with a whole new concept of human society. It's not about it's not about uh, going more socialist or going more capitalist or democratic socialism or or. You know, we need to reinvent what is the purpose of the human. What what are we living for? You know, are we living for just, you know, work, working 80% of our lives in order to consume most of the time and take pride in our, uh, you know, status sim material status symbols? That's where I think the scrutiny of the animal versus the human comes into play, which you you were you know focusing on. That's where I think if we discover what where we are different from our bodies, where what does the human in us actually want, actually needs, then we can come up with a whole different kind of concept for human life on this planet. You know, that it, it when we start discovering that, when we start to elevate our minds and our hearts to aspire to things beyond matter, then we can start seeing what actually do we need in order to provide for ourselves. And is there an easier way to, to accomplish this instead of just working 80% of our lives? Anyway... Yet yet to be to be over, man. We need to 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 keep to keep going at this discussion in another time, I think. Let's uh let's look at the chat here. Are you seeing something? Uh there's there's a bunch of things um that people here are are saying, chiming into the discussion. Kevin James says, um um I just you know, I just uh this I do I'm just seeing Kevin James saying there will be so many people out of work they stop them from um, protesting by giving them free weed and shrooms <laughs> in relation to to what you just said um, yeah yeah I don't know there's a, do you have a, a specific thing from the chat that uh, you think uh, 
we should bring I saw up a question from Julie Dehan. It's not exactly on topic, but it is is interesting. Uh, and it was right nine minutes into the show, so she Julie came came locked and loaded and ready to fire this one at us. Am I understanding this correctly? That nature is the program and the creator is the programmer. So I don't remember talking about the creator Ooh. yet, but <laughs> Julie's doing right. some homework. I guess. <laughs> You already brought up the question. You should give the answer as well. <laughs> uh, yes. Next question. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, the, whenever in the wisdom of Kabbalah, whenever we speak, which is where Asaf and I um, get this worldview from, um, the creator means uh, it's, we're talking about nature and we're not talking about nature, like, like pagan worship of, of trees or, or, or something like that. We're talking about, the really that that one formula maybe that Einstein was looking for or that all the scientists have been looking for what is that that one formula that ties everything that connects everything and and actually the place where it exists is actually above the trees it's above the waterfalls it's above the rainbows above doesn't mean um, spatially above it means like uh, above when you measure above and below in this realm it's it's more like cause and effect the more causal you get, that's that's closer to above, and the more effect you get, that's that's more towards um, below. So all of the, there is a force, and and everything in this. Once we get into reality that we can perceive, we're only talking about pluses and minus, plus and minus. That's 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 what's going on in this game down here that we're in now. We want to go up to where where that. Um, where it's all one again. That's what that's that's that kind of infinite. That's that's called beyond space and time. That's called endless perfection. That's called uh, like um, complete fulfillment. But here we're we're dealing with everything that's plus and minus. So the force that whatever it is that makes our heart beat. We talk about this all the time. Whatever it makes the stars shine. Whatever makes the grass grow. That's the plus force. And then all of material reality is the minus force. And it's all reality, whether it's on the inanimate, vegetative, animate, or speaking human level is uh, is running one simple line of software remember it well how can i get the most amount of benefit possible for the least amount of energy and um, that's the software and whatever this whatever it means by creator we don't even need to get into that but there's we can just we we really want to look at every nobody here everybody here should be a skeptic right nobody should just be believing a and it's not a cult this is not some kind of um any we want to only you know, challenge us if you hear something that's not right that's good iron sharpens iron like we we, we want to be uh, clear we want to get our message uh, clearly across what's happening. This is not philosophy. This is not theory. This is not some kind of religion. We're looking at what's happening. We're looking at the patterns and we're seeing where this is going. So to answer the question shortly, Asaf, you should have you know, pulled, pulled the brake on me on that one. You, you let me go way too long. Uh, <laughs> yes, there is a program. And there is a quote unquote program or whatever that means. So there was that one. You All next. right. All right, okay. I wanna, um, I wanna, th I just, I wanna throw at you something here. Uh, okay. You, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Uh, no, because you, you were talking about this whole uh, animal versus human kind of scrutiny. You, you kind of brought that, brought that up, and I think it's very relevant. Um, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have to continue the uh, e economics related discussion uh, later on, but maybe. Okay, let's just just t take a look at something. Okay, this is okay. Okay, this is um. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, this is um uh, some tweet that was that was trending by some lady named Helena Morrissey. Thank you for uh, for this video. So okay, take a look at this. Really cute, right? So you see this person, you know, giving the treat to the dog. And the dog sees that the person that, you know, the owner goes away, chews on the treat. Yum, yum, yum. Mm, mm, mm. This is good. Now what happens? Now what happens? Now it goes back to the drawer where the treats come from. Now oh, it takes... No. put another one on the table? It takes another one, oh. <laughs> puts it on the table, and closes the drawer. Closes the no. drawer. There you go. And mm, 
nice and cute. No. Here, here is me. Here is me. Here is my owner. Hey, can I get this? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, owner. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> thank you, Helena Morrissey, uh, for this. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, what do wow. you think? The, the, wow, right? There's This wow. is interesting. Why is this interesting? I, I want to get to the bottom of this. What, what is actually happening here? Okay, what do you think? The dog's been spending way too much time with humans. <laughs> do, what do you think is happening though? How do you interpret the situation? Does the animal, the dog, did it steal the treat and then tried to hide its... No, uh, not at all. Not yeah, at wait, all. wait, wait. Let me let me ask you a bunch of questions before okay. before you answer. Okay, did it did it steal? Did it try to then hide its uh, theft or even even more uh, com uh, complex? Did it try to hide its shame, or is it trying to just get two for one? Just a simple calculation, you know. Hey, I can get. Uh, you know, he's giving me from the drawer. I just need to, you know. You know, let's get into the dog. Let's get into the dog's mind and understand what, what's happening here. So is it just like, oh, there's a treat. They're coming from there. He's giving me them. So I'm just going to take, go there, get another one and ask for another one. That's and it. No, and, and, or, and he'll be mad at me. First of all, the whole thing could be staged, but let's leave that aside. Okay. No, no, I don't care if it's, even if it's staged, I don't care. I don't care. I think, so I think it's a good... Go ahead. <laughs> the next part. The next part is. Uh, um, the the next part is the dog understands if I took something I'm not supposed to. There's a consequence. We talked about truth before on the show. We don't live by truth. There's all these other things that happen. So if I take if if he comes back and sees that I took it, uh, then I'll be in trouble. So I should leave it. But if he comes back and he sees it's still on the table, he'll like me. I, just, I uh -huh. think it's all small. Dogs don't have language like we have. Sure, he's not. They have commu well, They have like communication they, skills. They have some communication they, skills, not sure, language, but can, yeah, they have right. And but they have not, a certain he, array of emotions. So, but all the things that we're talking about are. Um, <laughs> so what's the no, Seth? What's the, let's get to the bottom of this. What's the calculation that the dog? This is economics. This is economics 101. This is behavioral economics, what we're seeing here, right? I'm trying to, to use this now as an example to try to see how are we different in our economic calculations as opposed to animals. So what do you think is, is the calculation here that the dog is no, making? That looked to me basically like uh, all humans. That, that looked like the same behavior. So what, so what was the calculation? He, was, he, was the dog going like, How mm. can I get the most for myself for the least amount of effort? Okay. What if I told you that... <laughs> I'm, I'm just entertaining your... Uh... Challenge. <laughs> what if... Me. Yeah, just... What if I told you that maybe the dog was thinking, wow, the, I love my owner and all I do, you know, I guard the house and I, uh, you know, I, I, I uh, comfort my owner when my owner feels bad and I like being around my owner and my owner is a big part of my life. I feel him as my owner. I am... You know, he's the host in this situation. He's he's the owner of me. And maybe, maybe the dog was just going like, he wants to give me and he enjoys me getting this treat. Maybe I'll just give him another opportunity. <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> Not even a chance. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, no, it's possible that he just wants his uh, his person to, to uh, enjoy, right? He just wants to make his person happy. Or yeah, make person happy. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, I buy that. Maybe he wants to, or she wants to make uh, his person happy. Um, <laughs> okay, that's far fetched. It's it's tough, right? It's tough. It's a tough. Oh, it's, it's not. not what, what, 
No, it's not so tough. Why? Why is it okay? Then make it easy. Because he doesn't have he doesn't have all that language. It's it's there's it's all he's living only by instinct. If okay. he's the breed, if he's a breed that is that that is if he's a species, not species. If he's the breed that wants, you know, when you I, we have these dog these these books on dogs because we were looking to to get a dog for a while, um, and you can see and decided dog, not to. <laughs> I can't take care of a dog. If, um, had a, you know, this dog is easy to train, needs this, likes to run a lot, or this dog does not need to run a lot, only needs to go outside twice a day. And is it, this one is very um, uh, protective. Not only that, in this breed, the female behaves like this and the male behaves more like that. It's like a mm -hmm. science of math. You can pick out exact. I want a dog that I don't need to walk a lot. You know, you get some dogs like a Jack Russell Terrier and like it, the thing just jumps and yaps from the minute you wake up until the minute you go to sleep at night. Then you get another dog. He wants to just take him out to pee in the morning. He'll sit down in front of the fireplace and, you know, you'll, you'll come home from work. He'll get up from the door, give you a lick, you know, go outside to pee and then like go sleep again. It just, it's just depends on the kind of creature it is. Mm. So, so, this okay. All instinct. So, so the one, so the, the one component. So even if the, the, the dog, even if the dog wanted to, um, to hide what it to just get another one let's just say this even if the dog just wanted to get get another one or it wanted to give more pleasure to uh to just enjoy giving pleasure to the host in any case in either either of those cases the dogs do this without ego that's what the dogs don't have when they make the calculation so the dogs won't be in a situation where um, I just want to have more for me so that you can have less. That is probably the calculation that the dog cannot make, lacking the kind of ego that the human has. You know what I mean? Well, it sounds like, I mean, very much in capitalism, it's not just that you know if everyone had the same thing it's it we feel special when we have something that the other one doesn't you know exactly the, yeah. dude Je be, Jesse. The, I, I had a talk with uh dan Ariely, professor dan Ariely, uh when he yeah. was it, it, you know what i actually have somewhere uh somewhere uh, from years ago some footage of him and i talking on the roof of uh of, of uh some some building that you know uh, here in Israel um, years ago. Anyway, uh, I need to. It was actually an interesting conversation, and it's actually very relevant to what we're talking about. So I'll, you know what? I'll find that. You guys hear hear that? Uh, here's a promise. I'll find th this footage, and we'll get some a few minutes of it, and we'll play it on the show, or or put it on the channel, uh, or something like that. Um, but any case, in any case, he he talks about so much research that he has done in this field of behavioral economics showing that what people actually care about is not how much they have but how much they have in relation to others you know what i mean like Je yeah D listen jetsy did to yager they'd rather have less absolute less than relatively uh, um like like less than others as long as the others have less as well than them yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Jetsy is saying, do you think that the human ego has evolved beyond the incentives capitalism brings? And and here's here's what's this is what that's a great is. question. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Question. Nail it. And, and nail it. He now hello, nail it. Hello. Well, hello, coronavirus, because it's going to we have the free. I mean, capitalism kind of gave us the uh, the freedom to create whatever we need. But we're just behaving like these animals, like an animal, our own species of animal. And now comes the coronavirus, which helps us kind of organize what's important to us. Uh, it's not just the freedom to be able to go out and exploit anyone as long as I don't get caught. 
you know, and trade my carbon credits. I can still pollute if I can just pay someone else enough for their carbon credits and, you know, and all this kind of crap, these lies, just more lies on top mm. of lies uh, and, and, and legislative lies, legislated lies, you know, mm. making lies into law. Mm -hmm. uh, but now through the virus, all of a sudden our needs change. So the human ego, Jetsy, Yetzi would 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 cruise towards nuclear war. That's the only place it would go towards total annihilation of the human race. And there would be a few people left and families would be torn apart. And if we just let capitalism keep going as it is, we would tear apart all families. We would just exploit everything from everyone just for our own benefit. Uh, let's get to a few more questions since we're so close to the end. Uh, Global Check. Hello, everyone. Hello to all of our friends from Cairo, Quebec, Minnesota, South Africa, the UK, Woo. Salt Lake City, and Reef, Finland, yeah. Old Fort, North Carolina, Bergen, Norway, Brooklyn, Puerto Rico, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, Julie DeHaan says, what will happen to pets in the transition? This was touched on in an earlier show. Uh, yeah. That's uh, kind of... Go ahead. Should I try? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Pets, yeah, no, I feel like we should we should say something about pets now after after talking about that dog for a few minutes. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll I'll try to, to to sum it up here with regards to the pets and the uh, the difference between us and animals. So we have this whole uh, um, uh, extended section uh, of experience of existence we call it the human ego but really what it is is just a desire that is qualitatively different than that of the animal level so the rock only wants to keep if you think about all of reality as desires the rock only wants to preserve its existence the vegetative already wants to 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 bear fruit and to to grow the, the animate wants to move about and multiply and satisfy its needs. And the human, the human wants to find fulfillment. Not to be, to, to reach that balance with its body where its needs are being met. It seeks fulfillment. We're looking for some fulfillment and what we are discovering as we evolve is that this fulfillment is non-material that's what the, 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 the science is also finding today in the last 20 years all those happiness uh, uh, researchers are finding that you don't get happier when you have more material you don't become more satisfied when you have more than what your needs actually need because that's on the animate level for them it's fine the dog doesn't need more than getting its treat the the human needs to find a non-material fulfillment that only exists if you're asking us in the connection between us so that's the whole thing we've created an economy that directs us to fight with each other to gain more material uh, reward. It turns out that we don't need more material than what our animate level actually needs. And by fighting with each other, we're missing out on the spiritual non-material fulfillment that we actually need. And that's why the whole concept of society has to change. Welcome to the Great Transition, everybody. I know you just want to put a song now and we, we can we can call it a day, but um, uh, we got to say that... Um, I actually want to stay for another hour. That's what I actually want to say. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. I just want to say that we will be here on Sunday. And uh, on Sunday, we're going to be only on the Great Transition YouTube channel. And in general, if you really want to uh, keep up with uh, what we're talking about and everything, the great transition, 
this is where you want to go bit.ly slash the great transition is where we putting all our live shows and all the clips between the shows go there subscribe now if you haven't already more uh good things are coming your way if you uh, uh if you visit this channel also uh the handle for our twitter the header for our twitter uh page that we're now uh, bringing to life with the help of our dear chris jones uh, we're going to be in communication with anyone who wants to know more about the show, talk to us about what kind of topics we can explore together on The Great Transitions, and, and a lot a lot of other things. Go to uh, TGT underscore pod. The handle is TGT underscore pod. Leon, we saw your message about us talking over each other. We had a good laugh over about that this week. Thanks. Oh, we need to talk about that. Are we talking? We talk, we're talking over each, over each other, Seth. What? Ah, what? <laughs> Are we? No, but seriously, we appreciate you, your guys, uh, you guys, whatever feedback you have. This is a conversation that we can only have together. Let's do this, guys. We need to. We need to. We need to see a new world coming together. This is what's what's happening. The great transition starts in our minds and hearts. What do you got for us, Seth? Oh, hey, how about this one? Oh, again, to Ooh, okay. Thinking about all my great great friends, gigantic. Thinking about all my great great friends, gigantic. gigantic. Thinking about all my great great friends, gigantic. Gigantic. All around the world, connecting points in one desire. All around the world, and so many sparkles in gold fire. All around the world, connecting points in one desire. All around the world, and so many sparkles in gold fire. The world seems broken when you're living alone. Put the pieces back together, turn this earth to a home. As one soul, sparks on every end of the globe We unite as one flame, turn the hate into smoke Love will arise, I see fire in my friend's eyes Heart beating for the gold, love is covering crimes Yeah, shekel after shekel goes into the bank Effort after effort, brothers got your back Everybody praying only for the ten All we got, we paying only for the friends And he gon' finish the work One heart, one soul, love gon' cover the earth all around the world, connecting points in one desire. All around the world, and so many sparkles in gold fire. All around the world, connecting points in one desire. All around the world, and so many sparkles in gold fire. Hello, friends. Ain't nowhere else that I wanna be. To come here around. It's just the friends that I wanna be. Many obstacles. The friends I wanna learn from. For me. Yeah. Tell me what's my friends. purpose. All my I life I've been searching. For a really long time. Until I finally find you right now. I just and all my Maybe. life I was searching. Lost to myself Felt until they lift me out. Here. I don't know nothing but what I know. By the friends. That show my borderlands come close. Taking care of me. And one man, one soul. Smallest detail. All together, right now, let's go. Come here, yes. No Last generation. Know that we came off the for nothing. Now we get into a higher elevation. The friends are the greatest. Vibing in the same Congress. vibration. I will. Yeah. You, my brother, ain't no replacement. Nice. And I don't know nothing but the Jack friends. It. All around. Connecting points in one desire All around the world And so many sparkles in gold fire All around the world Connecting points in one desire All around the world And so many sparkles in gold fire All around the world Connecting points in one desire